So what we have over here is a demo on what we call Railways Maintenance as a Service. And this came out of some work we are doing with our uh, business units back in, in Europe, Hitachi Rails, and we got a big contract there to operate trains for 30 years. And we are operating some high-speed trains uh, both England and Scotland. And the trains are made by Hitachi, and they generate like a huge amount of data, close to 20 gigs a day, which is used for um, maintenance, predictive maintenance, and condition monitoring. The challenge is to transmit that much data from the trains to the cloud, and they're having a lot of difficulty in doing that. And we are providing a an fog and edge-based solution for it. We started by analyzing the data, and we saw that those 24 gigs, there's a lot of redundancy, uh, like there's sampling every 200 milliseconds, things like speed of the train, it doesn't really change that much. Um, and also, we looked into the data and said, maybe we can, instead of transmitting data all the time, we can only transmit when something important happens. The engine temperature goes up. That's when we transmit instead of transmitting it all the time. And uh, so that was the data management part. The other management, network management. Like uh, our solution is just software-based solution, which is installed on the an edge server over there, which comes with two cellular and one Wi-Fi. So we also provide a lot of connection management things, like uh, we can find out which network is the best at a given point of time, uh, transmit over that cellular network. When it stops at the station, we can connect to the station Wi-Fi and dump huge amounts of data. Uh, otherwise, yeah, whole like which data to stream, which data to send over a batch. And that really helps us in getting more data uh, to the cloud where it's really needed uh, at a lesser cost. And we can do much better condition monitoring. And so this is a really a demo which sort of replicates the scenarios which we'll see in a uh, real world, like we have a tunnel where the cellular connection is weak. So this is the demo, we'll, we'll only transmitting high priority data at that time. Uh, when it stops at the station, it transmits uh, all the data. So a whole bunch of solutions we build around the, a real use case and a real customer. It's sort of rep reproduced over here. So tell us, tell us uh, how that is part of the fog computing ecosystem. So it's a very good question. For me personally, I think transportation is one key area where the benefits of fog is very evident. Because if you think transportation things are moving, uh, like in open fog, we have this debate about what is edge and what is fog and what's the distinction. And the edge devices could be inside the train uh, or any vehicle for that matter. And let's say all a bunch of train comes and stops at a station. And we could have a fog node at the station which collects data from multiple edges and uh, does some analytics. So for example, we see a common train in all trains which stop at a station between 10 to 10.30 and the fog node can look at that train data and find out some analytics. Or if a lot of trains are failing in some sensor, they, it may pull from other supplemental data like weather uh, databases. So, uh, but in transportation, by virtue of things being in motion, there's a lot of new challenges, which I believe is uh, really a domain of fog computing, as opposed to some other verticals where fixed uh, where things are fixed, like optimized manufacturing, where the benefits of fog may not be that evident. So, other than transportation, what other verticals is uh, Hitachi involved with fog? So Hitachi is actually in one of wide, uh, I would say almost all verticals being like a big company. Uh, for Fox specifically, we do a lot of work in energy, uh, smart grids, and utilities, where again there's some uh, aspects of localized decision making intelligence, which uh, need not be necessarily at the edge device itself. Uh, we do work in smart manufacturing, but there the Fox cases are we're still establishing, I mean still uh, there are like a good uh, take data from multiple factories, that could be one fog use case. Other than public safety and surveillance, that's a big uh, use case involving video analytics and fog, uh, which also ties into smart cities. Uh, so yeah, I would say all these definitely. Tell us about the excitement around fog that you're seeing at Fog World Congress. Oh, I think there's a lot of uh, excitement for sure, because as you know, it's a very new, uh, like a Open Fog Consortium is pretty new. and. I happened to attend the first meeting, uh, the members only meeting Atlanta, that's, I don't believe even a year has gone by, and compared to that and over here, a uh, lot of things around internal clarity, what's edge, what is fog, a lot of advancements happened in the individual working groups, uh, I'm part of the communications working group and architecture, a lot of rapid progress have been made, uh, and then again, uh, the aim is not to do something from scratch, but also taking the best practices and knowledge from other groups so that we don't end up competing with each other. So a lot of uh, advancement made in aligning work with others. 
uh, new use cases and uh, technology and also in terms of just a business model too. It's because it's, at the end of the day it's not just about technology, how we can really find new use cases and business models. So I think uh, in all these aspects there's a lot of progress made and uh, definitely a lot of buzz going ahead. What are the benefits to you for uh, attending the conference? Definitely meeting a lot of people uh, and sharing ideas and uh, like personally if I was having lunch and the interesting thing was like I'm from Hitachi and there was this lady from Intel and all the rest were like startups. There were like three or four different, actually five, five different startups. So it was very exciting to see the kind of innovation that's happening and the kind of uh, new technologies that they bring in. They're all the way from deep learning and, and also just core platform development because uh, that's something which we can't map on traditional IT based platform to IoT. So a whole range of spectrum from platform development to analytics. So. I would say definitely meeting all these different folks over here.